Welcome back, Camly. Today, I want to do a deep dive into the phenomenon of teen mom vloggers. From 2015 to 2020, there was a boom of teen mothers taking up space on this platform and without a doubt had an impact on the way the younger generation views teen motherhood. The intention of this video is not to stir up drama, but rather to take a closer look at what was really going on. All the drama that I'm gonna talk about is water under the bridge now. I know I personally have grown a lot since this all went down and I think all of the other mothers have too. And I don't hold anything against these people personally. In 2009, MTV debuted the first episode of 16 and Pregnant. It got a lot of traction right away, completely blew up, and prompted the following series, Teen Mom and Teen Mom 2. Essentially, teen mothers were scouted out by these producers. They filmed a few segments during their pregnancy, the birth, and some of the aftermath. The drama with the baby daddies, the dynamic with the parents, losing friends, trying to keep friendships. All of the drama was really at the center of this show. And the producers really fueled that fire. These moms were under public scrutiny. Everybody was talking about it. They're very well known. And even to this day, as they're in their 30s and have older children, they're still under the public eye. Some of them even coming out to spill just how much the producers caused that extra drama just for the sake of views. Most of the time being completely against their will, they're under contract, they need to film, and the general consensus is that the producers very much exploited these young mothers. As for teen mom YouTubers, it's very different. They get full say on what goes on the internet, what people know about them, yet a lot of them still exploited the drama in their lives for the same reason, views. The beginning of teen moms on YouTube started with the teen mom story times. This often entailed a newly pregnant teenager sitting down, talking to the webcam on their computer, and telling the story of how they found out they were pregnant. A lot of these videos would go viral, get a ton of views, and you'd never really hear from them again. Nothing would really come of it. Maybe they'd make a few follow-up videos, but the production quality wasn't really there and the views weren't coming in. Not until the OG first generation of teen mom vloggers. We're talking Jillian Mercado, OK Baby, KK and Baby J, Jess Fam, and they were just filming their daily lives. This style of family vlogging was nothing new at the time, but after having watched Teen Mom on MTV and seen the story time videos, people were really curious what the day-to-day -day was, what it was really like, and thus far, this was the most authentic look into teen parenthood. There were certain points where the audience were confronted with just how naive and young these parents were. But because they shared so much of their lives down to the mundane chores and diaper changes, it felt like you were figuring it out with them. It felt like you were a part of the family. A lot of these vloggers were very consistent posting multiple times a week, if not daily. And they really made you feel like you were a part of their lives. And something about that level of intimacy drives people in. These channels eventually aged out of being teen parents, and that was no longer the main draw of their channel. They continued making content though, a lot of them targeting a older audience as they had grew up. In 2018, we saw a new generation of teen moms gaining some traction, myself being one of them. I posted a day in the life of a pregnant teenager and that was my big break, so to speak. That video didn't blow up, however, until after I had my baby and from there it just snowballed. These younger moms were following the path that the older generation had paved for them. A lot of them posting vlogs as well as routine videos. Come with me and my newborn as we do our nightly routine. Also, I'm 16 years old by the way. We banked on clickbait titles emphasizing our age. After my video blew up, I became very strategic about what I filmed and posted. I wouldn't film a video without having a solid concept for it. I had to go into it knowing what the thumbnail and title was gonna be rather than just filming my life and seeing what would stick. I started to befriend other teen moms on YouTube at the time. The nature of YouTube back then was very reliant on collaborations. It was a win-win for everyone. The first person I ever met through YouTube was teen mom Allie Brooke. 
We met in person, filmed some videos together, and hit it off. I was ultimately a part of three separate friend groups of Teen Mom YouTubers over the years. The first one formed when I was added to a group chat with around 10 other moms, including Allie. What you have to understand is we were all teenage girls. So obviously, there was drama. Within a month, there was a big fight between all of us. Subtweets were being made, quotes posted on Instagram stories directed at one another. Me and Alex from the channel Dear Grayson were very publicly beefing with one another. At the time, I was convinced that they were all just jealous because my channel had gotten bigger than theirs. Within months of my channel starting, I had gained over 100,000 subscribers, being one of the first in my generation to break that threshold. Out of nowhere, Maddie Lambert breaks onto the scene, being the youngest of anyone that has ever come before her, getting pregnant at just 13. And her channel absolutely blew up overnight. We met up in person, our babies were super close in age, and we kind of became this dynamic duo. With us both making the best numbers at the time, we were kind of the it girls, as cringy as that is to say now. That is what I thought of us back then. At this point, my ego was getting kind of big. I started scouting out teen moms that I thought had viral potential. I felt like I was doing these girls a favor by helping them rise to fame with me. I kind of saw myself as a messiah. I never thought of myself as better than anyone because of my numbers, but I definitely saw the power that I held being able to collaborate with a smaller channel and seeing just how much their channel would grow. I did genuinely like the girls I was collaborating with and I saw them as friends, but the role that YouTube fame played in our friendship was undeniable. In my core group of mom friends, was Zoe, Ali, and Yasmin. We all got along and had a genuine friendship at the heart of it. I got married, they were my bridesmaids, they helped me pick out my wedding dress. It became way more than a YouTube collab. Me, Ali, and Zoe went to Playlist Live together and that was really our first dose of feeling relevant and meeting tons of subscribers all at once. The three of us ran into Maddie Lambert at Playlist and she had formed her own little teen mom group. They were in a group of three, we were in a group of three. It was kind of like that Spider-Man meme. And it was very awkward for some reason. By the end of the event, there was an unspoken beef between the two groups. But eventually we were all able to talk and it seems like we both just thought the other group didn't like us. So we joined forces. The teen mom vlogger scene was growing and another mass group chat was born, including my friend group, the other group from Playlist, as well as a few other girls. The vibes over text were great, and we made plans to go to VidCon together and rent out a mansion on Airbnb. We even made a promotional video about it to hype up our audiences. Come see all your favorite teen moms at VidCon, babies included. The trip comes around, and right off the bat, the second we touch down in California, everything is chaos. So many clashing personalities, people fighting about who's sleeping where, and within 24 hours, the group had split in two. It was very divided, feelings were hurt. Maddie Lambert's mom was one of the only real adults there, and she was fighting for her life to keep the peace. And despite so much going wrong, there was so many videos filmed on that trip. We all got content for our channels, we filmed several sit-down videos in big groups where we would take turns talking and people were speculating in the comments being like, oh my God, did you see Cameron's face when so-and-so said that? Like you can so tell she does not like her. As well as people noticing, why wasn't this person in the video? Why wasn't that person in the video? I think every single one of us left that trip feeling really shitty about it. And there was so much drama in the group chat for weeks. A few of us even making sit down videos after the fact, talking about the drama on the trip. It was a lot. And a month later, I was no longer friends with any of the girls I was originally friends with. The girls who were bridesmaids at my wedding. That didn't have too much to do with the VidCon trip and was its own separate drama. Also, I wanna note that at this time, we were all posting some crazy videos on our channels. Swapping babies with my teen mom friends, swapping husbands with my best friend, taking my baby to high school, turning my baby into a visco girl, I'm pregnant with twins, vlogging my friend's birth, 
the clickbait was crazy. Anything for views and not a thought behind it. Some of the thumbnails and titles are so ridiculous, it cracks me up now looking back on it. And we were posting it in all seriousness. One of us would post a video and a few weeks later, another teen mom would post the same video concept and they'd be like, oh my God, she totally copied my idea. The whole thing was a fever dream. At this point in time, a lot of the teen moms, including myself, were popping out more babies, like 18, 19 years old, trying to have another baby on purpose. And we were accused of having another baby just for views. We obviously knew another pregnancy would give our channel a boost, but I don't think any of us brought a baby into this world just for that reason alone. I mean, we were all just trying to play into this fantasy that we had created for ourselves, trying to craft this perfect family image. And what does a perfect family have? Siblings. There was a lot of conversation about glamorizing teen pregnancy. And honestly, when you're making a decent income at such a young age, simply from posting videos, it was glamorous. Imagine being a teen mom, working a minimum wage job, trying to finish high school and take care of your baby, and then you see that shit on YouTube. This group of young moms and they're all friends and they're going on trips together. It's not realistic. Yeah, we faced similar struggles and got a lot of the judgments that any teen mom gets, but I think most of us were in rather privileged situations and we 100% glamorized teen pregnancy. It wasn't intentional, I think we all just wanted to be told we're doing a good job. We wanted the praise of people telling us, look how well you're handling motherhood at your age. Especially because when we first got pregnant, we were told, like any teen mom, that we wouldn't be adequate mothers. We had something to prove. And so because our public image was in our control, we curated a perfect polished family image. And so we couldn't act like the kids that we were especially for the whole internet to see. And I think the pressure of it all was such a unique pain that only we could relate on. When we were together, we could take a break from acting like we had it all together. At the end of the day, we were just a bunch of teenagers who ended up pregnant. Most of us coming from families with generational trauma and pain. And we were trying to do everything we could to provide a life for our children. That's the saddest part about all of it the children were at the center of this. At times, they were tossed around like props or used as accessories. They had millions of eyes on them with no awareness of what that even means. And I think we were too young to even think about it that way. Just like most teenagers, we weren't thinking ahead. We were just doing what we thought we had to do. We all got this same comment and rolled our eyes at it, but we really were Babies having babies. As the generation before us, we all eventually aged out of teen parenthood. The youngest, Maddie Lambert, just turned 20 this year. Meanwhile, the family vlogging genre on YouTube became oversaturated and overplayed. Controversies involving larger family channels brought forth a very important question. Is it ethical to monetize children? A lot of the audience was rightfully put off from engaging with this type of content. And a large portion of audiences aged out of watching it simply because they weren't kids anymore. Most family channels were on the family friendly side, of course, and so that's the audience they attracted. For these reasons, as well as shortened attention spans due to the rise of short-term content on other platforms, the family vlogging scene on YouTube is not what it once was. So what happened to us teen mom YouTubers in the aftermath? Some of them continued doing what they've been doing, posting the same type of content. Some went back to school and got an education. Some started selling explicit content on other platforms. There's been more babies born, marriage, divorce, custody battles, loss, and heartbreak. I think life humbled us all in different ways. We were forced to grow up and face the reality of what it really means to have kids at such a young age. For most of us, the glass was shattered. And speaking for myself, it was somewhat of a relief. The pressure was lifted 
the ego dissolved, and the healing could finally begin.